majestic sound of Helgar's pomp and circumstance march number four to accompany the king's outward procession as it's called after this joyful celebration in words and music to mark a new reign and behind the king one of the four pages his grandson Queen Camilla, two members of her family acting in the same capacity. The bishops chosen to assist the Queen during this ceremony. And her two companions, Queen's sister and close friend. Lady Lansdowne flanking Annabel Elliot. the Abbey, an unprecedented gesture at a coronation. He prepares to meet the leaders and representatives of the faith communities whose presence here today he has valued. And they all of them read a declaration to him of appreciation. And he thanks them. On the other side of the nave, crossing the Winston Churchill Memorial, past the tomb of the unknown warrior, some members of his family, and just acknowledging there the Governor's General of the Commonwealth Realms. His presence here today, of course, is also greatly valued, and a reminder of the late Queen's untiring commitment to the Commonwealth ethos. Thanks to the bishops, and so King Charles III, the oldest person to be crowned monarch of the United Kingdom, emerges from Westminster Abbey to the sound of the bells and the crowds outside. His whole life has been spent in readiness for this day. And by his own insistence, despite his age, there is much that he still wants to achieve in this reign. So with the Abbey Bells sounding the news of his coronation throughout the United Kingdom and beyond, Charles's journey as crowned sovereign is about to begin.
The bells ring out and while Hugh was guiding us through that beautiful and very moving service in Westminster Abbey, this was happening outside. The rain was falling, but within the rain we saw the formation of the largest military procession in this country for 70 years. Over 4,000 personnel from three military services and the Commonwealth, as well as the marching bands on foot and mounted will make this a feast for the eyes and the ears. It is already in position. It stretches for a mile down the Mall, through Admiralty Arch, a long white hall, all the way to Westminster. It is a magnificent sight. The Royal British Legion there on the inside around Parliament Square. And every regiment of the army represented and at the head of this procession, leading the way, is the Brigade Major, Lieutenant Colonel James Shaw of the Grenadier Guards. His grandfather took part in Queen Elizabeth's coronation in 1953. And behind him we have the mounted band of the Household Cavalry. And behind them the King's Troop, commanded by Major Fran Sykes. And the band of the Royal Regiment of Scotland leads detachments from the Realm and Commonwealth forces in British overseas territories, and they will be flanked by 124 flag bearers. We have the RAF as well, commanded by Group Captain Stephen Harrison. We have the Army Royal Armoured Corps, led by their colonels, the Army Corps, which includes the much-loved Gurkhas. We will show you all of this, but interestingly, they will all march off at the same time. And they are waiting for a command from Garrison Sergeant Major Andrew Stokes from the Coldstream Guards. We've mentioned Vern before. He's one of the leading architects of this procession and indeed both processions. He will give a command. That will be passed down right to the front and to every single person marching and they will move off at the same time and they will march to the same beat, indeed the same tune. It's the first time that's been attempted. They've been rehearsing for six weeks to ensure that all of the bands are synchronized. And towards the back of the procession, you've caught a glimpse of it already, the Gold State Coach. And you may think this is the sort of thing you'd find in fairy tales. In fact, I rather suspect the fairy tales were inspired by this. It was first seen in public in 1762 when George III rode in it for the state opening of Parliament. It is 260 years old. And Brigadier Greville Bibby, CBE, is alongside me, waiting for the command here, and I know you're anticipating this hugely, Greville. It's a, it's a really exciting and a, a, a impressive sight. It is, and I, I was just thinking, I, there's the Garrison Sergeant Major, you just mentioned Vern Stokes, I was speaking to him yesterday, just confirming how on earth they get everybody to step off at the same time. And as you say, Claire, there's a pre-recorded message um, that is in the ear of every bass drummer of every band on parade. There is the command. Now, it will take a few seconds for that to filter down. And the procession will all move off together. That is remarkable. The whole parade started together, and you notice that he paused as it was being counted down in his ear. The same countdown for, as I say, all the bass drums. That, that's a remarkable feat. And so begins the coronation procession, the route back from Westminster Abbey to Buckingham Palace. And this is where the fun begins, because the service, quite rightly, is solemn. It is serious. It, it was, I think, extremely emotional for those taking part and I think for most people watching. But this is almost a relief. Everything so far has gone absolutely like clockwork. And that golden coach, although it has 
poor suspension and may not be the most comfortable ride. It looks immaculate. It is glistening. It is gleaming. And it's made of gilt wood. That's a thin layer of gold leaf over wood. The interior is satin and velvet. And you see on the outside, 